Good morning. Welcome, everyone. Uh, not going to bring up football today. It wasn't the best weekend for that. So, announcements for Sunday Operation Christmas Child. Hello, hello. Is anyone there? Can you hear me? A little bit like, okay, is this close enough? Uh, one more time, testing, testing. Okay, and uh, well, I'm just gonna have to speak really loud or you want to? Can you hear me now? Okay, is, uh, are we on? Yeah. Are we on, okay. O Operation Christmas Child has begun. So grab a shoebox from the back of the sanctuary and fill it with small toys, hygiene items, etc., and bring it back to the church office with a $10 suggested shipping fee no later than Friday, November 18th. These boxes filled with love and the good news of Jesus are sent to children around the world who are in need. Instructions and shipping labels are included with the shoe boxes, and our goal this year is to fill a hundred boxes. So let's not let one go to waste. Grace Circle will meet this Tuesday at 10 a.m. in the parlor. Trustees Committee will meet this Wednesday at 7 p.m. in the archives room. Prime timers will meet for breakfast this Saturday at 8.30 at Pub 54. And the Hope Pregnancy Center will have a fundraiser dinner next Sunday, November 13th at noon in our FEC. The youth will have a turkey noodle fundraiser dinner on Sunday, November 20th after the 10.50 service in the FEC. So we got lunch taken care of for the next couple of Sundays, it looks like. Community Thanksgiving dinner will take place Thursday, November 24th. Gosh, that seems like that's Thanksgiving Day, isn't it? Yes, okay. From 11.30 to 12.30, for the homebound who would like to up to four meals delivered, or for those needing carryouts, please call the church office by 4 p.m. on Friday, November 18th, to sign up. This is a free meal for those in our community who might need some fellowship and good food on Thanksgiving Day. Now I'm going to try to get this one on. VMMW, that almost sounds like the Methodist women, will have their Christmas party on Tuesday, December 6th, 11.30 a.m. It will be catered by Urban Brew, and the cost is $15 per person. Please RSVP to the church office by November 22nd if you would like to attend. The ladies' Bible study will meet in the fellowship hall on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. and Thursdays at 10 a.m. They have a great group of women and would love for you to join them. VMMM, is that the Marvelous Methodist Men? That's us. Okay. <laughs> Memorial, Victory Memorial Methodist Men's Breakfast is held every Wednesday morning from 6.30 to 7.30 in the Fellowship Hall. Invite a friend and join us for good food, fellowship, and a devotion. An early watch prayer group <laughs> meets for fellowship, worship, intercession Monday through Saturday mornings, 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. in the chapel. Come and join them when you can. And even if you get there at 505, you're still, you're still going to be welcome. So daily devotions. Pastor Dave encourages everyone, all of us, to enjoy a quiet time with God each day. God is good. And all the time. Now, if you'll join me in our call to worship. Father God, thank you for every saint who served us faithfully. Please help us to be committed, faithful, and strong for you and your kingdom. We choose to give you our very best so your will is done and your kingdom comes here in Gaiman as it is in heaven. Like Abel, we want to worship you and offer you the sacrifices you desire. 
Please help us to be committed, faithful, and strong for you and your kingdom. We choose to give you our very best so your will is done and your kingdom comes here in Gaiman as it is in heaven. Like Enoch, we want to know you intimately and walk close to your side. Please help us to be committed, faithful, strong in your kingdom. We chose to give you our very best so your will is done and your kingdom comes here in Gaiman as it is in heaven. Like Noah, we want to be righteous and obedient to your call. Please help us to be committed, faithful, and strong in your kingdom. We choose to give you our very best so your will is done and your kingdom comes here in Ghana as it is in heaven. Like Abraham, we want to believe you and follow you no matter how difficult. Please help us to be committed, faithful, and strong, you and your kingdom, to give you our very best, so your will is done, and your kingdom comes here in God, as it is in heaven. Like Paul, we want your love to compel us and your gospel to consume us. Help us to be committed, faithful, and strong for you and your kingdom. You are very best. And your kingdom comes here in Ghana, as it is in heaven. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Spirit, empower us to run the marathon of faith with passion, patience, and persistence. Amen. <laughs> Would everyone please stand? And if there's any pianists sitting around, we'd love to have a piano player this morning. Okay, no takers. Okay, you may be sorry. Okay, here we go. Ready? And for all the saints who from their labors rest, who
You may be seated. We just heard a few minutes ago that Phyllis Clayton was taken to hospital and Joni, her daughter, who was to play for us this morning, has accompanied her to the hospital, so that's why we are now singing a cappella without a pianist. And you all did well, so you can give yourself a little pat on the back. Uh, of course, we love accompaniment, and we appreciate so much pianists or organists, but the truth is the worship of God does not require instrumentation. It does require hearts that love Him and voices that are willing to sing and make a joyful noise unto the Lord. And I heard a joyful noise this morning, so thank you, each one, for singing. And I told Sandy, we'll just make it work one way or the other. I deeply appreciate accompaniment. I had to pastor a church where for three, four months we had no accompaniment, and we sang everything without instruments, and there were just a handful of people, and the singing was not enthusiastic. <laughs> but we forged ahead, and God was faithful, and we found an accompanist, and the singing got better and better and better. But let me say that again. Worshiping God is about you and me loving God and allowing our hearts to be expressed in the words that we sing and the attitude that we bring. So I pray especially today that God will be pleased with the worship that we bring. The theme of our service today is the cloud of witnesses. All Saints Day or a celebration of Christians who have served God and have graduated from this life into the next is historically celebrated at this time of the year. And so today we will actually be mentioning in service all of those who have graduated from this life into the next in the past year. They are not the only ones we're celebrating, but they are the ones we will mention in worship by name. But all of those that we have known and loved, all of those who have helped us along the way, I ask you to think of them and remember them today. And we will discuss some of those in Scripture as well, people who found a real relationship with God and served God and loved God and honored God with their lives. We are remembering them today because they form the great cloud of witnesses that are cheering us on in our faith. So if you would join me this morning in our prayer in unison as we pray about that beautiful theme, the great cloud of witnesses. Almighty God, we thank you for the great cloud of witnesses who have already graduated into eternity with you and who left us a wonderful example of knowing you, trusting you, and serving you. It is inspiring to read about their conversion, discipleship, and service for your kingdom. We want to emulate their honesty, courage, and commitment. We give thanks for each prayer prayed on our behalf, each word of encouragement we have received, and each faith lesson we have learned from other devoted followers of Jesus. Help us to let go of all sin and distraction and teach us to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, our Savior and Lord. We long to be fully devoted disciples who run a good race, fight a good fight, and keep the faith. May our lives be fertile soil that produce 30, 60, or 100-fold for you and your kingdom. Amen. As our ushers come forward, we will receive tithe, offering, and faith promise gifts this morning. The stewardship reflection comes out of Romans, one of the most powerful letters that Paul ever wrote. This is right deep into the letter in the 12th chapter, and he has some encouragement to share with Christians. I hope you will hear that encouragement this morning. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. 
For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. And today, I don't want you to close your eyes as we pray. I want you to keep your eyes open and look at each other because we are the body of Christ. We are gathered today visibly as disciples of Jesus, followers of Jesus. And each of you is gifted. Each of you is a part of this wonderful family or body of Christ. And so as we give today, Lord, we give in response to how you have given to us. You are a generous giver. Every good and perfect gift comes from you. And so today as we give tithe or offering or faith promise gifts, we give out of the joy and the gratitude that is in our hearts because of the God you are and all you have given us. Bless the gift. Bless the giver. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Go Junior Bell Choir, let's stand together and sing our doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, may be seated. Our chancel choir is going to sing majesty unaccompanied today, so God bless them. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Beautiful job, Chancel Choir. Well done, Miss Sandy. If our children will come forward, we'll have a children's moment together. Somebody's not happy. Sawyer. Right over there. There you go. Today we're going to talk about witnesses. So who knows what it takes to be a witness? You see something or you hear it or you experience it okay so uh, if for instance you were walking down the street and you saw two vehicles collide and have an accident they might say Cam did you see what happened yeah I saw exactly what happened this guy didn't stop at the stop sign and hit the other car okay you were there you saw it what did it sound like It was loud. I mean, there was glass everywhere, and the poor people were injured. I saw exactly what happened. That's what a witness is, somebody that sees or hears or experiences something. Today, we're going to talk about Christians who are witnesses. All those who have been a part of Jesus and are a part right now are witnesses. They have seen or heard or experienced personally things that relate to God, to knowing God, loving God, serving God, watching God provide for them or save them or lead them. And so our scripture deals with some of the important Christians who lived in the past and how God used their lives to be examples for us. They showed us how we can know God how we can trust God, how we can love God and serve God. So, it is my prayer today that each of us here will be a part of that great cloud of witnesses. Now, the idea in using that language, a cloud, is people that have died and gone to be with God are no longer physically here. You you can't see them. They've graduated, but they are alive and well, kind of like a cloud in the sky, they're a part of a huge gathering. So, Kelly, what does that look like for us today? When you go to a football game, all of a sudden all the bleachers are full of fans, fans who have come to watch their favorite team play and hopefully win. Well, this cloud of witnesses is like a big stadium full of people, full of fans, Jesus fans. And guess who they are cheering on? You and me, you Mackenzie. Each one of us, Dallas, they are cheering us on in our faith. You know why? Because they know how important it is to graduate. There's a painful story in the Bible about a rich man and a poor man who both died. The rich man didn't go to heaven, he landed up in hell. And the poor man landed up in that place God had prepared, Abraham's bosom. And the rich man was in such agony, he said, Father Abraham, please send that poor Lazarus so he can dip his finger in some water and cool my tongue because I'm in torment. And this is what Jesus said in that parable, he can't cross over. He can't get to from where he is to where you are. And you can't come from where you are to where he is. And then he said this, please send Lazarus to speak to my brothers because I don't want them to end up in this place. And he said, I can't do that. They've got Moses, the first five books of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. They've got Moses and they've got the prophets. They need to listen to them. And they said, oh no, They won't listen to them, but if you send somebody who comes back from the dead, I'm sure they'll listen. And this is what the parable ends with. Even if somebody comes back from the dead, they won't believe. You know, that was prophetic. 
because somebody did come back from the dead. Who came back? Jesus. And guess what? There are millions of people today who still don't believe, who still don't know how to know God and love God and serve God. So what is our hope, our prayer, our passion? We want to know God. We want to love God. We want to serve Him. And we want to tell everybody, for God's sake, please, Take your faith seriously. Give your heart to Jesus. Be a part of this great cloud of witnesses. Join the grandstand, the bleachers, the big stadium of all those who are now born again and full of God's Spirit. That's what I want for you. That's what I want for me. And point to the people out there. Everybody point. And that's what we want for y'all. Let's pray. Lord, make us, each one of us, true believers, blood-washed and spirit-filled and committed to knowing you and loving you and serving you. Help us to join the great cloud of witnesses who are a part of this family called Christian, people who know Jesus, who know Christ and follow Christ. We ask in his name, and everybody said... There'll be candy waiting for you at the close of service. I guess you're practicing your Christmas program today. Right, General? Yes. Go, y'all. Let's give our junior choir bell players a big hand. Come on in, y'all. Glad to see you. Make yourself right at home. Today is a special day because today we're going to recognize by name all of those who've been a part of our Victory Memorial family who have passed away in this last year. I like to use the reference who have graduated into eternity. You see, we're all going to leave this life and we're going to graduate to one place or another. But these that were among us were Believers and followers of Jesus, lovers of Jesus, and Jesus says he's going to go and prepare a place for us so that where he is, there we may be also. So each name that we read, we are reading kind of like a graduation ceremony. You know, at the end of school here, when the seniors cross the stage and get their certificate, well, these saints that we are mentioning have graduated and are receiving all the good things that Christ has prepared for those who know him and love him. Now, I said earlier on, they're not the only ones. Many of us have lost loved ones along the way, and I want you to think of them fondly today. I want you to celebrate their lives. I want you to thank them for what they did to help you along your way. You know, none of us get here on our own. There are people who pray for us. There are people who live the Christian life in front of us. There are Sunday school teachers who taught us lessons and youth directors who put up with our misbehavior and helped us figure things out along the way. There are many, many lives who have touched us. And so as we read these names, you think of the many others as we celebrate the great cloud of witnesses. Sandy's going to light a candle as I read each of these names who have passed away in the last year from Victory Memorial. Bernice Barker, Patricia Chapman, Greg Shields, Vicki McKinnon, Don Adams, Joyce Hopkins, Fern Hacker, Alfred Chill, Robert Freeman, Stuart Lauer, Sharon Brockman, Jack Blem, Mary Hintergaard, Clayton Goff, Rosonia 
Chadwick, Patsy Ayres, Kurt Root. Thank you, Sandy. Let us pray together. Lord, it is with fondness that we remember each of these who were a part of our faith family, each of these who worshipped with us, studied alongside of us, served with us, each of these who have enriched our lives, we celebrate them and their graduation. And Lord, we want to learn from them. Help us each one here to have a living faith. Help us to have a true love for you. Help us to recommit ourselves this morning to know you and serve you, to live in a way that would honor you. We long to join them in that wonderful place prepared for all who know Christ and love Christ. An eternity spent with you. An eternity that the hymn writer says, when we've been there 10,000 years, bright shining as the sun, we have no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. We thank you for them and all the others who have graduated ahead of us. Help us to run a good race fight a good fight, and keep the faith. We prayed in Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. A quick commercial. Another fine volume has been published just this past week called The Next Methodism. It's a little more substantial to read, but every single article that is in here is worth reading. I've got about a third of the way through it, I have nine copies that are ordered. If you would like to read and start praying and dreaming about what the future can look like right here in Gaiman for us who are called Methodist. And Methodists aren't special. They're just Bible-believing, blood-washed, spirit-filled Christians. That's all. And uh, a revival broke out among them 200-plus years ago, and we want that revival to be in us. So, if you'd like a copy of this, they're right there on the front pew. I would like for you to read that. When you finish, pass it on. But it's not just about educating. It's about may that fire burn in us. May those primitive Christians called Methodist be an inspiration to us so that we can witness the way they did, worship the way they did, serve the way they did. You couldn't shut them down. The more resistance, the more persecution, the more <clears throat> criticism they received, the brighter they burned. So I bought copies for those who would like to read that. Join me in our prayer for illumination this morning. Guide us, O God, by your word and Holy Spirit, that in your light we may see light, in your truth find freedom, and in your will Discover peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. The scripture today comes out of Hebrews. This is a letter that was written to Hebrew Christians who were scattered and were being persecuted. They were suffering. And this is a letter that was written to them. We're going to read out of the 11th chapter and two verses out of the 12th. Now, faith is confidence in what we hope for, an assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. By faith, Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith he was commended as righteous when God spoke well of his offerings. And by faith Abel still speaks even though he is dead. By faith Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken... He was commended as one who pleased God. Before I read that next verse, I want to 
pause here and I want to challenge you and me. Do our lives please God? When he looks at you and me, how we live our lives, is your life, is my life pleasing to God? A living faith, a real relationship with God gives us the power to live a life that pleases him. And without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. By faith, Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear, built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that is in keeping with faith. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to a city with foundations whose architect and builder is God. And by faith, even Sarah, who was past childbearing age, was enabled to bear children because she considered him faithful who had made the promise. And from this one man, and he as good as dead, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sand on the seashore. And now out of chapter 12, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the, the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. This is the word of the Lord. A couple of questions for you to think about as we examine this scripture together this morning. And maybe you can talk to one another around lunch about each of these questions. Whom among your family and your friends has had the greatest spiritual impact on your walk with God? As you think about the people you've met along the way, who has helped you and impacted you in your own relationship with God? Number two, when you read about famous Christian disciples or leaders, who has inspired you the most, whether they be in the Bible or in history itself? Who really stands out and speaks to you and inspires you? And then number three, when you read your Bible, who do you identify with and who encourages you to be your utmost for Christ? We're right in the middle of deer hunting season and yesterday I was out when it was really cold like 28 degrees cold and when I got to the little blind that I built I looked up and it was amazing how many stars can be seen right here in the panhandle this is an incredible part of Oklahoma for clear skies and just the brilliance of the night sky and before I sat down, I just looked around. In fact, I saw an, one of our falling stars shoot across the horizon. And, and then I saw maybe it was the space station or one of those uh, orbiting vessels going around. And I looked up and I just paused and I thought, wow, the night sky looks beautiful this early in the morning when there are no 
lights around and I'm out there in the country and it's pitch, pitch dark. And then it made me think of God taking Abraham and saying, I want you to get out of your tent and I want you to look up and I want you to see the night sky and I'm going to give you descendants that will be that numerous. And you know his struggle, he waited and waited and waited and no son, no son born of Sarah until they were dead, past reproduction, impossible. I think they'd given up, if you will. I don't know how this is going to happen. It's certainly not going to happen within our power, in our efforts. There's nothing more we can do. We've done everything. We've turned over every single stone possible. In fact, we know that Sarah suggested that they, they have a child with one of her, her servants. And that didn't turn out very well. Ishmael came out of that fiasco. But when it was at the end of the journey... When Sarah was 90 years old, when her reproductive system had dried up, God said, now I'm going to give you that son. And we know that she laughed. And don't think poorly of her because I think you would have laughed too. I can see Sarah saying, Lord, there's no fire burning here anymore. We're way past that. I mean, we're really old. I mean... We tried and tried. We did everything we knew how, but we're done. And the Lord said, this time next year, you're going to be pregnant and you're going to have a child. And what God promised happened. Now, I want to pause there. That's what faith is, folk. You personally hearing from God, you personally sensing the presence of God, you building a relationship with God, and then living it out. And sometimes everything goes well, and things just seem to happen according to plan. But Joanne, sometimes they don't go well. And it's like, what plan is this? And I thought this, and why is this happening? And I'm sick of this. And sometimes you just get defeated and discouraged and even depressed, and you think, it's never going to happen. I must have heard wrong, or I don't know what's going on. But hear me today. I want you to hear me loudly and clearly. God is faithful. God does not lie. God can be relied upon. That's what faith is. Confident that God is God and God will do what He promised. He who called you is faithful. He who promises you is faithful. And if you commit your life into Him, He will keep that relationship strong and he'll make sure that you graduate this life with honors I'm always proud of a high school graduation or a college graduation when the students have worked long and hard and struggled but finally they make it to the end and they get rewarded for their efforts for their diligence when they cross that stage and they get their certificate and they've got the cap and gown and everybody's excited. But you know, there are years of struggle, years of late nights and large volumes that have to be read, all kinds of papers. I remember when I was in seminary, I was writing papers every week, sometimes two or three a week, and some of them were 30 page papers. Poor Cindy was worn out and I was worn out. But you know, at the end, graduation the great cloud of witnesses is about you and me having a true relationship with God knowing God walking with God trusting God serving God and the time will come soon when we'll graduate and that's a time to be shouting to be celebrating I'm a coming home Lord I'm a ready I was reminded of that little song I've shared with you before. Away far beyond Jordan, we'll meet in that land. Oh, won't it be grand? Away far beyond Jordan, we'll meet in that beautiful land. So grand. If you get there before I do, look out for me, because I'm coming too. I'm going to graduate, and I want to graduate into the nearer presence of God. I want to see that place 
that God has prepared for each one who knows Him and loves Him. Away far beyond Jordan, we'll meet in that beautiful land, so grand. That's what this text is about, about our long list of people who heard from God, who experienced God, who committed their lives to following God, and guess what? They made it. Their lives are still speaking. You know, Abel, we don't have a whole lot about Abel or about Cain, but we know their, their lives got conflicted. And Cain was so mad he killed his brother. Terrible story. But that's not the end of the story. Neil, Abel, he's still speaking. Dead and graduated, but he's still speaking. What is he saying? He's saying, you take God seriously. You worship God. You offer him the sacrifices that he asks of you. And God sees and God appreciates. And your life is safe in God's hand. But wait a minute, didn't he get murdered? Yes, he did. Was that right? No, it's wrong. But you know, even though he was murdered, that's not the end of his life. His life is not a failure. It's not a disaster. It's a victory. You know why? Because anybody who's in God's hand is safe and secure. The worst that can happen to us is we can die. And Twanda, that's no tragedy. To be absent in the flesh is to be present with the Lord, for the believer. Now I must pause here. There's a misunderstanding in our society that everybody that dies immediately goes to heaven. That is not true. That's not the biblical witness. Those who know him and love him and serve him are guaranteed a relationship forever with him. But those who don't, there's a tragic scripture that says, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, I never knew you. Not because God didn't want to know them, he did. But they were too busy or too distracted or too prideful to ever receive the gift from God that Jesus earned. Listen, the gift of salvation is free to us, but it was not free to God. He paid an exorbitant price to give you salvation, to build a relationship with you. And I like to think of it this way. Donna, the Christmas tree is up, the lights are up, the decorations are up. Underneath are presents galore. You know how we are. We buy the gifts, we wrap the gifts. We can't wait to have everybody come. Maybe Christmas Eve or Christmas Day. We all gather, we hand them out, and then we, we open them. Ooh, that's exactly what I wanted. Thank you. Well, listen to me, folks. When Jesus died on the cross, it's like he got your present already and wrapped it up with your name on it. But it's not yours unless you claim it and open it and enjoy it. There's a present for everybody. Salvation is free and available to us all. But if you don't claim it, if you never open it, it remains there under the tree. God wants you to have it. God wants you to open it. God wants you to enjoy. God wants you to be a saint. Sometimes we say, a saint? I'm no saint. You're right. You aren't, nor am I. But the blood of Jesus can make sinful, broken people like us into saints. He washes away our sins. He takes our woundings and he heals them. He takes our folly and he teaches us how to be wise. He makes us Christ-like. You know what a saint means? A holy one. And you might say, now wait a minute, preacher. I'm not holy. Yeah, I know. Me neither. But God can make unholy people like us holy. God can make broken, sinful people like us saints. And He wants to. God stands ready to change your life and fill you with His Spirit and make you beautiful in His sight. This great cloud of witnesses is not a list of perfect people but people who heard from God and took God seriously and committed their lives to following Him and they graduated with honors. And I want to challenge you this morning. I want you to be one of them. I want you to take your relationship with God seriously. I want you to say every day, Lord, how do I please you today? I'm not just living for myself. It's not just about me. It's not just about what I want. I want to get on my knees with Jesus and say, not my will, but your will be done. How do I please you? 
Those who come to God must believe that God exists and that He rewards those who diligently seek Him and live to please Him. Without that kind of faith, it is impossible to please God. And when you and I end the journey, there's going to be one important question that you've got to answer and I've got to answer. Did you live to please God? Did you know Him and love Him? Did you serve Him? Because if the answer is yes, you better get ready for a future that is beyond description. This is how the Apostle Paul talks about it. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard. It hasn't even entered our imaginations what God has prepared for those who love Him. You know, grandmothers especially, they love to spoil their grandchildren. They love to make all kinds of treats for them, buy them all kinds of gifts. They've got pictures on the refrigerator. They carry them in the purse. They just love those grandbabies to pieces. You never see a woman happier than when she's got that little grandbaby and she's a hugging and a kissing. And Well, that's just a glimpse of what it's going to be like for each of us to truly meet God in eternity. He's awaiting for you and me. He can't, he can't wait to share all that He has prepared for us. If God did not spare His own Son, but freely gave Him up for us on the cross, will He not together with Him freely give us all things? Curtis, if you've got Jesus, if you've really got Him, you've got everything. When God gives you His Son, and He becomes your Savior and Lord, you inherit everything. You're an heir of the Father. You know what heirs are? When somebody dies, you read their will, and they say, you inherit the house. You get the cars. David, you get the rifles. God says, listen to me now. God says, I want to make you an heir. I want you to inherit not just a piece, but everything. Everything I have is yours. Remember what the prodigal dad said to the son who was so mad? The, the, the son who stayed at home, angry, bitter, jealous. Why are you treating this younger brother so nicely? He's, he's a rebel. He's a sinner. He, he slept with prostitutes. I can't believe you even being nice to him. Throw him out of the house. How come you never treated me nicely? How come you never gave me a little feast with my friends, a little goat? And the father said, listen, everything I have is yours. What's wrong with you? Why are you so bent out of shape? I'm your dad. I love you. Everything I have is yours. Well, I want you to hear God today. God has made provision for you and me, and he wants us to be a part of that family. And when we leave this life, I'll tell you what, and get to the next, we're going to have no regrets if we truly know Him and love Him. Mike, I think we're going to say, why was I so nervous? Why did I have so many doubts or fears? Why was I dragging my feet when I realized how nice it is to be here? I can't wait to get there. You're all graduating, and I pray that all of us will graduate with confidence and joy and honor. Lord, I don't deserve to be here. I know that. But Jesus died in my place. And the blood of Jesus washed me clean. And the Spirit of God has filled me. And I grew to know you and love you, Lord. And I can't wait to get in. Can I go? That's what Paul, or whoever the author is, is writing about. All of these have graduated. All of these, is, they're all cheering us on. Donna, run a good race. David. Fight a good fight. Lacey, keep the faith. For God's sake, don't play fast and loose with your faith. You hold on tightly. You read, you study, you pray, you serve, so that when the time comes for you to go, you say, I'm a coming, Lord. I'm ready. May the Lord find us ready. May the Lord find us eager. Each of these that is mentioned in the 11th chapter of Hebrews, each of them had to find what was true about God and how to serve Him. 
Noah building an ark when it had never really rained. There'd never been a flood. Didn't even know what that looked like. But it happened. Ramy, when God says it's going to flood, you can take that to the bank, my friend. It's going to flood. And when they were in the ark, they were so happy they were in because they said, oh, you couldn't survive out there now without the ark. And when Abram went a walking into the wilderness, not knowing where he was going, he knew one thing. God said, go, and I'm, I'm a going. And when God says, stop, carry, then I'm stopping. And when God says, you're going to have children, keep looking at the stars, it's going to happen. Now, wait a little, Lord. I've waited a long time. I mean, how long do I have to wait? Who likes to wait here? Abraham gives a whole new meaning to waiting. But God was faithful. That's the extreme example of waiting. And when Isaac was born, laughter filled the house. That's what happens to those who know God and love God. There's joy in his presence. There's laughter. There's healing. There's life. There's promise. Man, I can't paint a picture pretty enough for you. What the writer of Hebrews is saying here is, listen, folks, run a good race. Strip off everything that's holding you back. Make sure you've got your sneakers on. Make sure you're practicing every day so that you can graduate, so that you can run through the tape. You know, our bishop, Robert Hayes, when he was finishing his time here in Oklahoma, he said at a big conference, I've decided I'm not going to try to reach the finish line. I'm going to run through the tape. You know, like the sprinters, when they're running 100 meters, they're all fast. But whoever can get there first, they push out their chest. I want to run through. The, that's our bishop. He said, I want to run for Christ that way. I'm running through the tape. That's what I'm asking you to do. You be enthusiastic about your walk with God. You give Him your best. You say, Lord, I'm not quitting until you call me home. Look away from everything that distracts. Keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. Why, Jim? He's the author and the finisher of your faith. He's the pioneer and perfecter. He's the A and the Z. You get all wrapped up in Him. Kim, never be ashamed to say, I love Jesus, and I follow Jesus, and I share Him. The greatest gift we'll ever receive is a true living relationship with Christ. And all of these who've gone ahead of us, they're all there in the big stadium saying, keep a running, keep a fighting. Hold on to your faith no matter what. Why? Because God is faithful, and believe me, it's worth it. The rich man said, please send somebody back from the dead to warn my brothers. I don't want them to end up here. There is no need for any of us to end up there. God has given us his son, and he has risen from the dead, and he lives each day to pray for us, to call us, to come to our senses, to come home and be a part of the family. I pray today that you will know that you know that you know that your life is right with God, that you're a part of the witnesses that you have seen and you have heard and you've experienced for yourself what it means to know Jesus and serve Jesus. That's what it's all about. I'll close with this. You put your right foot in, take your right foot out, put your right foot in and you shake it all about. It's participation, it's ownership, It's experience. You've got to meet Jesus personally. You've got to love him personally. You've got to serve him personally. And then you become a witness. Sometimes people say, how do you know this is true? I know that I know that I know. I have seen, I have heard, I've experienced it. God is real. My God is real. And he's able to keep that which I've committed into his hand until that final day. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for each one here, each one of us, precious in your sight, each one of us sinners, lost, broken, unless you find us, unless you forgive us, unless you make us whole. Oh, Spirit of God, convince us, 
O Spirit of God, convert us. O Spirit of God, conform us to the image and the likeness of Jesus. Fill our lives, change our lives, make us a part of the witnesses. May we join the great cloud that have gathered on this side of eternity and on the other. We prayed in Jesus' name. Everybody said, Amen. Sandy's up. She's going to sing without accompaniment. Bless you, Sandy. <laughs> okay, let's sing. I sing a song of the saints of God. I sing a song of the saints of God, patiently brave and true, whose toil and fought and lived and died for the Lord they loved and knew. And one was a doctor and one was a queen and one was a shepherdess on the green. They were all of the saints of God and I mean God's helping to be one too. They love their Lord so dear, so dear and His love made them strong. And they followed the right for the Jesus' sakes, the whole of their good lives long. And one was a soldier, and one was a priest, and one was a slain by a fierce wild beast. And there's not any reason, no, not the least, why I shouldn't be one too. They live not only ages past, there are hundreds of thousands still. The world is bright with the joyous saints who love to do Jesus' will. You can meet them in school, on the streets, in the store, in church by the sea, in the house next door. They are saints of God, whether rich or poor, and I mean to be one too. And that's my challenge. Sinner, become a saint. Jesus can do it for each of us. Jesus wants to do it. He died on that cross to make it possible. As you and I put our faith in Him, as we commit and follow Him, our lives become a beautiful reflection of who He is. We're going to sing, they'll know we are Christians by our love as we prepare to intercede for the needs of others. Lead us again, beloved Sandy. We are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord. And we pray that all unity may one day be restored. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love, yes, they'll know. Christians by our love. We will walk with each other. We will walk hand in hand. We will walk with each other. We will walk hand in hand. And together we'll spread the news that God is in our land. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. We will work with each other. We will work side by side. We will work with each other. We will work side by side. And we'll guard human dignity and save human pride. 
And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. Oh, praise to the Father from whom all things come. And oh, praise to Christ Jesus, God's only Son. And oh, praise to the Spirit who makes us one. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. Anyone who would like to come forward and kneel here at the chancel rail, please feel free to do that. The rest, please just remain in your pew as we pray together. What a privilege to be able to speak to God, to know that He hears us, that He stands ready to help us. Lord, I am reminded of that one leper, one out of ten, who came running back to thank you, Jesus, for noticing him, for hearing his request, for answering and healing him from his leprosy. Together with that one leper, we fall down on our knees, we bow our heads, and we say thank you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for dying on the cross for us. Thank you for inviting us to be a part of your family. No greater gift could anybody give us than to die for us and then to rise again and offer us eternal life. We are so grateful. We give you thanks. Lord, I pray for Bill Dow as he's recovering from his second hip replacement surgery. Please help and heal Bill Dow. Thank you that Monty was cleared and he's able to drive again after his two surgeries. Bless him and Rinda as they're visiting with family. Lord, I want to thank you for each widow who has been comforted and strengthened and blessed as they've grieved and adjusted to living without their beloved husband. Thank you for each widower who has been supported and comforted by you as they've had to redo their whole lives without their beloved wife. Thank you for each healing that has taken place. Neil Hire Yeo, who made his way through that awful battle with leukemia, two long years, and he's alive and well and enjoying both his career and his family and all the things that make for a happy life. Thank you for his living faith in you. Lord, thank you for being with Jenny Lynch, who lost her beloved husband, Bebo, had the funeral yesterday. We wrap Jenny up in love and prayers. Thank you for our beloved friend, Clara, who's visiting with us. We wrap her up in love and prayers. Thank you for being her comfort and strength as she lost her beloved Larry. Thank you for their lives together and the promise of a future for each of us as we will graduate and join those who have gone ahead of us. Thank you for Gaiman America, our way of life. We pray for more rain. Thank you for the snow and rain that fell. Lord, we need a couple of inches. Please send us two, three, four inches of rain in the next weeks. We are very dry. Bless our schools, our students and teachers. Bless our mayor and our city council. Bless all of our first responders. Bless every resident here in Gaiman. I pray that they will sense your presence. I pray that the conviction of the Holy Spirit will rest on them. We want to see people wonderfully born again, wonderfully filled with your Spirit, following you, loving you, serving alongside of you and each other. As we pray the prayer you taught us, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today is the first Sunday of the month. It is our custom to celebrate the Lord's Supper on the first Sunday. All are welcome to be a part. Christ invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and before one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now hear the gospel, the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name. And we join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus the Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, his death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and you made with us a new covenant by water and by the Spirit. On that night, that unforgettable night, when Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread, he gave thanks to you, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, and he said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, he gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we now offer ourselves in praise and in thanksgiving as a holy and a living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as together we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And now we pray, O God, pour out your Holy Spirit on each one of us gathered here on these gifts of bread and juice. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, a part of that great cloud of witnesses, those who are redeemed, by your blood, by your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. If those who are going to assist would come forward, I will serve them first. And then together with their help, we will serve the rest of the congregation. I don't think this was working too well, so you might need that one. Drew, the body of Christ broken for you, take and eat, know that he loves you. Lacey, the body of Christ broken for you, take and eat, 
Jackie, the body of Christ broken for you. Randy, the body of Christ broken for you. Nick, he loves you and gave himself for you. Brenda, body of Christ broken for you. Sandy, body of Christ broken for you. Take and eat. Know that he loves you. Drew the blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Drink. Know that he loves you. Wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. The blood of Christ shed for you. Drink. Know that he loves you. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are made one in Christ, and the bread we break and share is a sharing in the body of Christ. There will be an intention station at the back of the church. All of those who would like to be a part of that, feel free to go to the back. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, let's celebrate this wonderful love made possible through the incarnation, crucifixion, and resurrection of Christ. It is my prayer for you this morning. It is my prayer for myself that we would be aware of this great cloud of witnesses that is cheering us on in our faith and that we would become one of those witnesses as we allow the grace of God to forgive us and save us and make us a part of God's beloved family. It is my prayer for you today. It is my prayer for myself that each of us would be aware of this great cloud of witnesses that is cheering us on in our faith and that we would become one of those witnesses, that we would allow the grace of God to forgive us and save us and make us a part of God's precious family. Amen. It is my prayer for you today, it is my prayer for myself, that each of us would be aware of this great cloud of witnesses, and that we would become one of those witnesses, that the grace of God would forgive us and save us and make us a part of this beautiful family, the family of God. Amen. Some of you can come over to this side. Donna? Warren? Buster? 
It is my prayer for you today. It is my prayer for myself that we would be aware of this great cloud of witnesses that is cheering us on in our faith, that we would become one of those witnesses, that the grace of God would, would wonderfully bring forgiveness, new birth, and belonging to the family of God, to each of us. Amen. serving. Every time we celebrate the Lord's Supper, we are reminded of how personal God is. He shows up personally. He speaks to us personally. He saves us personally. Christianity is a personal relationship with the living God. Hallelujah. Please join me in the prayer after the communion service. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We have an opportunity now just to celebrate and to think deeply about what God has done for us. We're going to listen to a YouTube music video called From the Inside Out by Hillsong. If you know the words, sing along. They're written in your bulletin on the back page. And as we get ready to leave worship and go into the mission field that God has called you and me to occupy and shine the Christ light within the copies of The Next Methodism are here on the front pew if you'd like one. I do want to say a prayer for Phyllis Clakem, who was taken to hospital. Lord, I pray for Phyllis, whatever's going on. She's been having struggles over these last months. We wrap our beloved Phyllis up in love and prayers. Please touch her, help her. Be with Joni, her daughter, as she's by her side. We speak your blessing over their lives. And also a word for any guests today, please leave your information so I can reach out and celebrate you worshiping with us and encourage you in your faith. I am a pastor, a shepherd who loves all people, not just those who come here, but I try to live this faith out wherever God sends me. We are glad you are with us and we want to see you grow in your faith. So if I can help in any way, I want to do that. Receive the blessing of God as we leave the challenge of God. Therefore, my beloved brothers and sisters, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. Amen.